Okay, I've just had a cup of tea and it was very, very nice. So now my voice isn't horrible and stuff. So, uh, let's let's go ahead, let's go, let's go have sweet dreams. Time for bed? Oh yes. It's a little me. Good night, guys. I do all I can to forget what happened, what I became, what I lost. I act like each day is a new one, one worth living to the fullest. Nightmares, though, <sighs> and something I can't escape. Pep Gogido, the persistent catalyst. Nola! The wind is nice, don't you think? I thought, um, okay, this is gonna sound weird, but I thought you were dead? I am. It's time to forget it all, Pep. Uh. This is a dream, huh? Yeah, but I am still living on, you know? You need to move on. Vesperia died and came back. I can do the same. Oh, hey, come to think of it. I'm dead too. I know. <laughs> it's very kind to meet you here. Your nightmares were probably given to you by her. Those things were horrible. She probably also did a similar thing to your brother, but that's all in the past. You and your two friends have a remarkable destiny, Pep. I can't tell you what yet, but I can assure you, fighting more and other angels is only the beginning of your journey. Soon enough, we'll meet again. But when we do, it'll be a lot more hectic than anything you or I have encountered. I wish I could tell you, but if I did it tonight, you must have everything up. I just say it'll be a class like no other. It's so great to see you, not as a horror freak brain fan of being on my past doubts and fears. <laughs> well, it's good to see you in my spirits too. That optimistic, that optimistic attitude of yours, the one that keeps you fighting, that perseverance is something that will serve you well in your next life. I look forward to when we can speak again, but I think I'm ready to wake up now. Perfect timing. I'm almost out of things. See you later, Fredo. Mm. Ah, so nice not to have a nightmare for once. You're a bad lion, you know. What do you mean? You aren't proud of your past at all, are you? Not the real one. I was reading an interesting story, you know? In it, a brave vigilante stood tall, toe to toe, against unbelievable odds, and even faced himself. But in the end, victory would come at the cost of everything he loved. Ringing any bells, better up, Scallion? But I... Okay, I don't know how the hell you do that, but yes, that's an abridged version of my past. Shh. You say it yourself. Women always find out the truth. Always. I'm not here telling you this to judge you. I found your story inspiring. Uh, really? There's a lot of things beyond our control, you know? You were forced to make a choice. You think it was wrong? I don't know. My mother was dear to me. Was it all worth it for a promise? You know I don't have the power to answer that. But maybe both were right and wrong, huh? You had to do what you thought you could only lead to a good outcome in the end, even if it was still not great. So I'm paraphrasing, because... Do I remind you of her? Who? Your mother? Not really. There are similarities, but I never think of you like I did her. That's fair. I have taken the role of no one, though, haven't I? Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. Sorry to put that on you. Why be sorry? It feels great having someone depend on me. Someone believe in me. You and Willie are great friends. I hope we can be this way forever. Yeah, me too. <sighs> I'll be honest. And I know death was so peaceful, I'd have gone to join them a long while ago. It was meeting you and Blobhead here that gave me the courage to continue on, you know. He met me at a good time. I was on my way to find him out then. An extinct volcano. I was tired of it. I couldn't find anyone to tolerate me. But then I almost read right... <laughs> but then I almost read right smack bang into him. Seeing his joy, compassion, his lovable nature, his ability to forgive whatever I did, he renewed my perseverance. Then I met you as well. From hell, I woke to find heaven. I'm so glad I decided to quit being so stubborn and join you too. Every day I feel so happy that I'm not alone. 
It's great to feel so good about everything. Every morning I wake up to your own thoughts. Even now that we're dead, but apparently not gone. You two are here with me. That's it. That's all I need. Oh good, you're already, you're already awake. The fake work is fired and you're ready to return to Earth. Maybe at the central crystal. Central crystal. Yeah. Um. Now if we talk to this freaking age. Mm -hmm. So, are you satisfied getting all clue on that secret of mine? Satisfied I got to the root of it independently of your assistance, but like with many things I find out about you, it raises more questions than it answers. Not only about you, what you were, how you've changed since then, but about those you got to know during that time and their existences now. Jeez, you really like to get to know people, huh? I'm very analytical about both society and other things. It's how much cool people tend to be, but I feel dumb in that even now I still want to know more. Despite how much finding out things has made me unhappy, living a lie in ignorant bliss, I suppose that's a dream now at best. I understand. You want to find at least something that means all of your analysis wasn't in vain. To find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, like that you're engaged, right? Not to know or understand everything, but to find that hope is still there for the meekest pockets of reality. Something like that. I'm not sure. At first I thought it was a thing I did because I enjoyed people's reaction when I'm onto their deceit, and in some vague sense that satisfaction does make it worthwhile, but it's bittersweet because then I want to know more, and you're too busy being a tight-lipped keeper of secrets to let me just be at ease. Well, what fun would I be to you if I knew all there was to know about me? These mysteries of mine are one of the reasons you can't seem to stay mad at me, huh? Beyond the fact you're famously desperate for a lack of solitude, which I understand completely. Stop making me sound so pitiful. You were no better off than I was before you met Rowley. <laughs> Sorry, hey, I don't mind. Like, I give you snark about it, but I like that you're so analytical about stuff and so passionate about finding out all the secrets I hold. I love it, actually. When you amaze me by cluing in me into the facts you know that I thought you didn't, it's like a mindfuck. I never see it coming, even when you foreshadow it, which is also cool. Oh, I never really thought of it that way. I just thought my constant inspection into your private affairs annoyed you. You're my favorite comic book hero, who's actually real, and finding out just how flawed and humane you are is actually just the most amazing thing. Beyond the fact you want to know so much about me, so my purse lips are the new villain, get it? You really are a funny little tabby, but I think in a way obnoxious mystery bags have always been my favorite kind of opponent. And when it comes to mystery bags, there's none better than me, says me. Then I'll make it my priority to defeat your wall of fairies and find out everything about you. But more comes first, of course. Yeah, he actually poses the foot to something. Let's get going. <laughs> it's cute. Does this just repeat? That was a fun conversation, but there's nothing more to really add. Yeah, okay. Good, that doesn't repeat the whole thing. That would be a bit obnoxious. <sighs> you do not yet realize your purpose. I lied, mortals. You were never reaped. This has all been an elaborate visitation. There will be another later. For now, focus your efforts on more. In time, I will reveal your true purpose, your real importance. The need for intelligence will set you free. Oh shit, no, title drop. Shut it down!